Hey guys, I'm Aaron, and today we're gonna to look at the top five free extensions available from the SketchUp team. So there's a lot of extensions out there, right? Hundreds of them available on the extension warehouse. Um, and one of the developers for extensions is actually the SketchUp team. The people who work on SketchUp also occasionally make extensions. Some of these are utilities that people consider to be native, uh, sandbox tools, advanced camera tools, um, actually were extensions or are extensions. Dynamic components is actually an extension. Uh, but there's a, a handful of them that are just nice little utilities that are available on Extension Warehouse, and they don't get recognized that often. There's some of these are older extensions that still work just fine, uh, and some of these are just a little bit niche and maybe not something that you use too often, but I wanted to count down the top five of these extensions, and this this is there's more than five. I think there's a dozen or so from the SketchUp team. So uh, yeah, check these out. I will put a link to the downloads uh, pages for each of these on the Extension Warehouse in the description. Check that out, and uh, here they are. All right, first one we're going to look at is called Create Layout File from Scenes, and that will allow you to create layout files from scenes. Yeah, it's not the most, uh, you know, not a lot of marketing went into that title. It's, it does exactly what it says. So what I have here, I have a model, and uh, this model has five scenes. We have this cover, which is a 3D model. And then each of these other ones is just one of the four sides of this building. And uh, you can see this is exactly what it is. So this is, this is kind of what I would go out to if I was going to go make my elevations. This is exactly what I would do. I would create one of each of these create it uh, with a parallel projection, turn materials off, maybe, may, uh, depending on the, on the materials. In this case, I turn it off to get this nice white outline. So um, we're gonna take this and we're gonna use the extension on it. So extension, you guys know how much I like a simple extension. Something where you push a button and it does exactly what you're expecting. So that's exactly what this does. So if I go to extensions, there's this create layout file from scenes. I hit that. It does prompt one time saying what size paper do I want to use? I'm going to jump up to a letter and I'm going to say landscape orientation and I'm going to click OK. <clears throat> now this takes a few seconds and what it does is it goes through, grabs every scene I have, jumps over into layout, populates a brand new layout file uh, with the scenes that I had in the model. So if I click through here, you can see here's each of my different scenes each on their own page. Now this is something to point out, it's not it's not perfect, right? So this is getting you started. This is not done if you have, you know, a border to put on, you want to do call out text, uh, scale it properly. All that stuff still has to be done. So this is, this is like step one of your process. So you can see on here, like some of these are cut off because of the scale it dumped it out as. That's totally arbitrary based on how far I was zoomed in when I created the scene. So there's more work to be done, but the nice part, is like I said, it just, it's it's here. It's already in layout and now I can start working and putting my, my final touches on here. So that's our first one, create layout file from scenes. The next one, similar, uh, kind of helps visualize for output is right here, safe frame tools. We're gonna set an act, a camera aspect ratio. So I'm gonna come in here, I get again, just a nice, oops, on my other window. Let me bring that right over. It's this nice, simple little UI. What's the aspect ratio? So say I'm exporting this right here and I wanna put it onto social media, uh, something like that, and I know it's a, a 0.5 uh, width to height. I can put that in there and it'll give me these gray bars showing, okay, if you export right now, this is what you're gonna get. Um, I can play around with a few things here. I can change my, my uh, angle of view, my, my X or Y. I can force the size of an output. If I export this real quick, what's it going to look like? I can turn on transparency, anti-aliasing. aliasing. Um, honestly, I probably wouldn't actually export from here. You can. I can come in and bump up what's the specific size I want to export. And I can use my gray bars to make sure the important part is inside the screen. I would probably use this to help me crop and create scenes instead of actually exporting. I would probably still take this to layout, export a higher quality image, um, but even if I don't hit export from here, I do still have the ability to just use it, like I said, just for the gray bars. So if I wanna see what does a two to one look like, 
I could hit two. I'm gonna take a little teeny gray bars over here on the side, but I could see that this aspect ratio, this this building works much better in this aspect ratio because I could fill it up, fill the scene with it. Um, so it's a really nice, really simple, quick and easy way to to see if your your model is going to fit inside your picture, image, your render, whatever it is, is going to fit inside the to be used aspect ratio. And again, you do have the option to export. If you do go to export, you can type in the exact size. It'll it'll keep the aspect ratio again based on this. But you can bump that up to be higher. You can turn on transparency and anti-aliasing uh, and export it. And it will allow you to export a PNG file right to your desktop or documents or wherever you want. You can uh, spit out that file. So I'm just going to hit reset. Gets rid of the black bars and then close that. All right, moving along. We have something called annotations. Annotations is a really cool extension and it's very, very simple. Um, so there's actually, when you click, when you install annotations, you actually do get a toolbar for this one. So if we go to tool palettes and I find annotations on here, I, I, I got to uninstall some stuff because I got too many things. Here's annotations and it gives you these three little buttons. So I have two drawing tools, one erase tool. In order to use annotations, you are going to have to turn something. So I'll just click on it. This is what's going to happen if you don't already have the overlay turned on. It's going to say enable annotation overlay to start annotating. So overlays are these things that allow you to view uh, different information put over the top of your model. So I'm going to turn on annotations. Oh, I hit OK here. OK, yes, sir. Annotations. And then I can close this. A lot of people don't even know this is here, but if you do look at your windows, you do have an overlays uh, window you can turn on here. So whether you're Mac or Windows, you will have this extra tab you can turn on. So now annotations is turned on. I'm just going to close overlays. And what we're going to want to do is we're going to start by making a scene. So I'm going to get to a view. I'm going to say that I want to put an annotation on here. It says get rid of this skylight. So I'm going to go to the view I want. I'm going to right click and I'm going to say add. And then I'm going to put in, I'm going to use this top one, this top over overlay annotation. I'm sorry, I keep fix, mixing those up. I'm going to circle this and I'm going to say, I don't want that. And what that did now is it made a new scene. So it added that overlay, that annotation of my scene. So if I come to a different scene, it's going to go away. But every time I come back to this, it's going to show that on there. So uh, this can get a little confusing because I can orbit around inside this scene and it will stick around. Uh, but if I go to another existing scene, it will turn off. I can also toggle that on and off with annotations because I can turn my annotations on and off separately like that. Uh, if I want to get rid of it, I can use the eraser tool. It's a special eraser. It's a erase annotations tool. And this will let me just scrub over and get rid of it. The other button right here allows me to put text. I'm drawing with my mouse. So uh, those of you who have a tablet and work on SketchUp with a tablet will love this much more than I do. And that actually puts it on a surface. So if I want to put on a note there, again, same thing. It is attached to the scene. So if this goes away, you know, I'm not going to not going to see it. But if I come back here, it'll flip it back on. I can see it. And again, just like before, I can erase it with that annotation eraser tool. So this is a great way to go in and very similar to what happens in SketchUp for iPad allows you to mark up your model, save it to a scene, and then you can flip it on and off as you go. All right, moving on. Uh, shapes. Shapes is probably on this list the tool that I've used the most. Um, I usually have it installed pretty close to the beginning of using SketchUp. And when it's installed, it creates under the draw menu, it creates this little pop out. It allows you to add a box, cylinder, cone, torus, tube, prism, pyramid, or dome. I'm going to click box. And what it does, it just prompts you, give me a width, give me a depth, give me a height. I click OK, and it draws a box. Now, where to put the box? It puts the box at the origin. So where's the origin in this model? Well, I have it turned off right now. So we'll go to view. We'll turn on axes. And we'll see the axes. And we'll see way over here for some reason is where my axes are. I'm not really sure how that all happened, but it did. But here's my box. So the box I just created, I can go ahead and scoot that out of the way. And then we'll try another one. Go to view. I'm sorry, draw shapes. Let's make uh Let's make a cone. Sure. I don't even know if that's two foot by four foot. Okay. And once I click, okay. Okay. There's my cone. So you can see it's a quick and easy way 
to draw shapes, especially if you just need some primitives, primitive simple shapes. Um, you can just click on the draw and it's just a, an easy way to get any of these uh, shapes in here. If you're a super fast SketchUp modeler, you might be offended by this and say, oh, I could draw that quicker myself. That's cool, go for it, do that. Uh, but if you do need to just get these in here quickly and easily, shapes is a nice way to do it. All right, final item we're gonna look at is Material Resizer. Uh, material Resizer is a nice way to keep your models from getting too bloated. We talk about things like purging and that sort of thing, but what Material Resizer does is it looks through your whole model, everything in the file, and shows you all of the materials, and then with each material, how big the actual image associated with it is. So in here, you can see I have a bunch of these 1040 by 1040, which are good size. I mean, that's that's kind of average. I have some smaller ones down here. Uh, and I have a couple up here that are 2048 by 2048. Not huge, but every once in a while, you'll find somebody who has a big 4K, 8K, whatever imported image and is just enormous. So what we can do here is we can say, okay, well, let's grab these top ones that are 2048 by 2048. Let's, let's chop them in half to 1024 by 1024. We come down here, we say reduce size of materials to 1024. And when we click go, it's just gonna resize just those selected items. And there we go, four materials resized, okay. And now those are all 1024 by 1024. So I just saved a little bit of bloat in my model by making those images smaller than they were before. So again, it's not gonna it's not gonna cut the size of your, well, it could, honestly, I shouldn't say that. You could cut the size of your model in half by uh, reducing oversized images. They can add a lot of file size. So worth checking out. If you work with a lot of photo real materials, imported materials, stuff like that, uh, it's worth trying because it will, just because of how quick and easy it is. Manually going through and reach sizing the, you know, an image and then re-importing and everything's kind of a pain. Just having it in here and then resizing it with a single button click is pretty nice. So there you go. Those are the top five. Those are all free. They're all linked down below in the description. You can download any of them, run them right now. Everything I did was on 2025. Some of these extensions are older extensions and the listing page hasn't been updated. I think one of them says it only works in 2023, but you can see they all work here. Um, so check that out. Try them out. Let me know what you think in the comments. Uh, they're good, free, solid extensions, and they're simple, and they do exactly what they say they're going to do, which, like I said, that's my kind of extension. Love that. If you like that video, click like down below, and if you haven't already, please do subscribe. We create several videos each and every week, and you'll be notified of all of them if you subscribe. Most importantly, though, leave us a comment down below. Uh, if you think of a different extension you like, if you've tried one of these and have questions, comments, whatever, uh, leave that kind of stuff in the comments. We like making these videos a lot, but we like them even more when they're showing something you want to see. Thank you.